टुडे इन अ वेरी क्विक ओवरव्यू आई विल टेल यू द डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्टेटफुल एंड स्टेटलेस सिस्टम एंड इन द स्टेटलेस देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड जे डब्ल्यू टी विच इज ऑल्सो लाइक यू कैन से दैट अ फॉलो अप क्वेश्चन विच जनरली कम्स सो इवन दो इट्स अ मोनोलिथिक आर्किटेक्चर राइट सो वॉट जनरली हैपन इज टू यूज केसेस द फर्स्ट यूज केस इज सेशन मैनेजमेंट and the second use case was let's say add cart okay there could be many use cases but i'm saying let's say there's two use cases which was heavily used this stateful uh, feature so why this session management and add cart feature relies into the stateful because see it is temporary because uh, session management is something like after an expiry you have to remove it or you have to renew it and it's so it's a very dynamic you can say that it's a dynamic okay the second thing is huge volume the session so as your number increases the session also get increases even for one user there can be possible that multiple sessions is present okay and here with the same cart also it is temporary and it's dynamic adding removing adding removing adding removing and huge volume so here if you understand this common thing between a uh, very dynamic temporary and huge volume that's where earlier stateful seems like yes stateful architecture is good for such use cases so now we know the use cases so let's take an example of session so what generally happen is earlier whenever a client makes a request the first it has to do a session it has to log in so internally it creates a session of a session of a user a this is let's say one particular instance of service x okay now what happen is any subsequent request comes in from the user a this instance knows that okay this session user a session is valid this is valid session okay let it process it where where any follow up request let's say get user detail but now the problem comes here is but now the problem comes here is for each service it's possible that there are not a single instance there are multiple instances let's say this is instance 2 this was instance 1 okay similarly there could be possible that for the same service x instance 3 and whenever it is possible it is there are multiple instances load balancer is there in front of it and it can distribute the traffic to any one of the instance now if the request comes from a user a now the session of a user a is there in the instance 1 okay now if the user a says hey get me the details of users let's say now this load balancer if now move the request to this instance 2 does instance 2 knows whether the user a is a session is valid or not instance 2 would not be able to fulfill this request because it doesn't know that the session is valid or not for this user so that's where the feature something called as sticky session A sticky session comes into the picture so A sticky session is a load balancer feature so what happen in this is so whenever the first time whenever the first time a request comes to a load balancer for login and it goes to a particular instance this instance will create a session okay now in the response okay the response it goes so here in the as part of the sticky session generally session which is known as j session id you can say that it's added into the cookie in the cookie it put certain j session id and also certain information about an instance from which it knows that 
any subsequent request which comes from this user or this IP address where the request should go. Now here the problem with this sticky session and statefulness is that even though there are multiple instances the load is not getting distributed properly. To resolve this what generally happen is here this instance is started storing the session into the DB. Okay, now the session of user A is present into DB. So now you don't need this. Now you don't need a sticky session. Okay, anytime request comes Anytime request come from user A, it can go to any one of the instance and but they need one extra DB call to know that the session of a user A is valid or not. First thing, one extra DB call. Second thing is maintaining the session table two so this is uh, now okay but you have made your uh, architecture to stateless like request can goes to any one of the uh, server and but this has this two major issues now that's where the next come is like JWT so in case of JWT it has three parts so, okay so JWT has three parts, header, payload, signature. So header contain information about what is the key. What is the key? Let's say it says that RSA256. This is the key I am using for the signature. So header include this information. Payload is like what is the expiry time of this token? What are the permissions let's say what are the permission this user has or something like some user ID and then this contain the signature so it's like header plus payload and it do RSA 256 so it's a signature to make sure that there is no tampering into this data so now when you are saying that signature is also used generally then it is JWS. So when you're using token JWT only not JWS. So their key is empty. You are not signing it. But whenever we are talking about JWT, we always put their signature is there. So ultimately indirectly we are talking about JWS. S is nothing but we are doing a signature. There is one more thing JWE. So here if you see that this data is not encrypted at all. So here, if you want encryption also, in the JWT, this payload get encrypted. So generally, JWT plus JWS is used. Now the first time it is making a, let's say, slash login. It The request can goes to any one of them. Let's say it goes to instance one. So at the login, it knows that it has to create a JWT. It will create a JWT token and return to it. Okay. Now any subsequent request slash you uh, get user. Okay. Now load balancer can distribute uh, the traffic to any of the instance. Let's say the instance three guard. Now here in this request JWT token also it will pass. Okay. So now let's say that your spring Spring security has a uh, framework has already provided lot of uh, uh, classes through which you can validate this JWT is valid or not. So, so no additional call. That's the what I'm trying to say. This JWT is a self contained information which has everything about what is the expiry, what is the role and everything. Once it's validated, this get user request is fulfilled and it responds it. First, blacklist 
tokens if you want to maintain a blacklist tokens so what you will do how you will handle it definitely in some cash you will put a uh, this is like a blacklist tokens so you will put some token 1 token 2 token 3 token 4 so you will maintain some list of tokens which are blacklisted and if any uh, server this request comes you don't want to process even the token is valid but it's blacklisted you don't want to process any subsequent request so a subsequent call maybe to cash might be required in case you have a requirement where you are maintaining a blacklist token second let's say that if your token is compromised if your uh, JWT token is compromised what you will do you can't do anything right so there are multiple things like uh, uh, short-lived tokens short-lived tokens like let's say for one-time use one-time use token so that one time you use the token you have to again generate a token okay so these all things you can do or another thing you can do is that uh, change the key itself but the impact was like if you change the key anyone all it's not like one token get impacted uh, many users with that uh, similar key tokens get impacted but yeah, this is how generally the discussion happen and maybe in the Spring Boot uh, security topic, I will cover everything this like 